When working with clients, there's a couple of things that tend to come up time and time again. And there's a beauty in acknowledging that our human experience and the pain of our human experience is really shared no matter what demographic we come from or different background that we're coming to the work from. And the first being when I'm working with clients is really self-doubt and doubting our capacity, doubting what we want for ourselves is possible for our lives. And so where we really start is diving into, well, how have we become over-identified with our most limiting thoughts? And our personality and the way that we see ourselves and the way we perceive ourselves is just an identification with the thoughts that we're having. And when we're believing those thoughts of self-doubt, we're validating that narrative and that's shaping the way that we bring our energy, our capacity to show up to challenges, our capacity to show up to relationships or work environments. That's shaping the energy that we're bringing into those situations. So where we always start is going back and seeing, well, where's the origin of that thought coming from? What experience reinforced that belief system to you? and then choosing different thoughts that validate more expansive belief systems that allow us to show up in different ways and try new things and put ourselves in new situations while constantly returning to the nervous system and regulating and making sure we feel safe going into that situation. But self-doubt is one that comes up a lot. And I think what I attribute that to personally is this world of social media where we're comparing ourselves. We see the end result and we see the distance between where we are and where we want to be as proof that that's not possible for ourselves. When in reality, it's just the daily action and the daily consistency that we need to show up for ourselves. So I think social media is really feeding into that narrative of us believing those doubtful thoughts of what's possible. I centered the book around four key structures. The first being alchemizing fear, and then we walk through into cultivating courage, and then the magnetic mindset, which is the juicy part, and then living in joy, which is really absorbing all of the good in our lives and simmering in it, tuning into the glimmers in our life, which are the opposite of triggers. They're the situations and experiences that deliver us these little moments of satisfaction and delight. They calm our nervous system. But in order to get to that place, we really have to face, well, what is it that's keeping me from occupying that energy right now? The imprint that I want to leave with someone else that's interacted with my work in any capacity is feeling capable and confident to tackle whatever it is that they're dealing with in their life right now. It's not always highs, and we've all navigated these deep, low moments. And I want there to be awareness from coming from that work that there is another choice available to them at every step of the way. That although it seems that there's only one path ahead, there are always multiple avenues for you to explore and walk and live and enjoy and work through. And that it's up to you in this moment to choose what that future path looks like and to know that you do have a choice. And so hopefully when someone's read the book or worked through the book, they make that choice that brings them a little bit closer to themselves and that true north.